this each into our uh, LFS machine after we had put up our SSH server. <laughs> okay. Um, today I want to show you. show you um, some cool stuff. I'm gonna go, uh, let's get net tools and um, we'll get nmap and well net tools provides uh, IF config okay and ARP and um, some other basic networking utilities. We'll get that, we'll get nmap. Um, I'll give you a little rundown on nmap real quick. We'll go back and we'll get links 1 or links to links with I 2.1 Okay. Um, then we'll do CDR tools, and um, we'll do we'll make an ISO. Okay. And then we'll uh, we'll do CPIO, and we'll okay, show you, show you how CPIO works. Okay. So it's gonna be fun. Okay. And I can call up my my browser. I'm going to go into new sources first. I can call up links now, okay, because I got that going. And say 092.168.1.1. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. 101, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. And go down the packages. And I want to get out of here net tools. Should be in the net tools. Oh, there is net tools. Okay. Um, net tools. You can follow me in a PDF if you want. That's where we're gonna start. It says um, there's a kernel headers patch. There's a um, net tools. Net tools 1.60. Kernel headers. GCC34 patch. Um, and a uh, and my octo I IO control patch. So that's what that is. And you know what? I don't see everything I need there. So I'm just gonna go back into um my uh well, I actually have the packages stored on SSH. Let's see if we well we know I know I got my SSH server running. So, sshd start, just to make sure, okay? Running homie? <laughs> Maybe you put homie on yours too, I don't know. That's pretty funny, right? Sparks up today. Say ssh, um, Doug, Doug, at line 2.168.1.10, So you're not going to be able to connect to my server to get your packages, right? So, you know, you're going to... You can get them, okay? They're out there. They're out there. And now you know how to get them. You're pretty cool. You got them. Mount SDA1 um, minor in... Um, see, programs out, I think. Trash. Backups out. Backups out. Media? No. Programs. OS. Okay. Um, 6.2. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. CD. LFS. Um, 6.2. We'll clear. We'll say list. 
talking about uh, net tools, I think. Net tools? Was it net tools? Yeah, okay. Alright, so these are all the um, packages I need. Okay. Um, all packages you need, so. So, we'll just say while read line. Or, can we say while? authenticate like three times while read line do s copy verbose uh, dollar sign dollar sign line to um, root at 192.168.1.118 root yeah, I think I'm going to have to authenticate like three times on this one. That's okay, we got it. Do you want to continue? Sure. Yeah. It, th this is not supposed to be this way. You can... Uh, you don't have to authenticate every time you move a single package, okay? Um, but with this, I did because I didn't, uh, um, put it exactly how it should be. Okay. So pretty much, I said, uh, I read all the lines, right? I read, I read each individual line and did that, okay? Um, you, you could just as well have, um, said something as far as, uh, copy, copy all net tools, right? You could have said copy um, for both all uh, or, or copied these lines. You could have copied these lines okay, to a uh, to a directory okay, and just um, copied the whole directory over, okay? And it would have got everything over. You could have said S copy V um, blah 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 you know, directory directory forward slash all okay you wouldn't have to authenticate so many times okay but I did so um while I'm here I'm gonna get um ls and I'm gonna grip uh in map okay huh. grip in map okay I don't think there's any patches or anything so I can say s copy v in map map to um, root at 192.168.1.118 forward slash root. Okay. Okay. Um, I can uh, ls grep out links because I'm going to use that later. Links dash. I'll, I'll throw a dash in it. Okay. These are the two. Actually, let me skip links. Yeah. So I don't... I got some something else. I think there's something else I have to get. Um, CDR tools. I can... LS and uh, grep. CDR tools. CDR. Um, I think CDR tools only has those two patches in a package, I think. Okay. So, I can say that too, um, S copy, V, for, for, ugh, V for verbose, and say, um, nah, I don't want to do that, I'm going to authenticate three times, say LS, grep, um, CDR tools, okay, and I'll just say, while read line. Well, read line do um, s copy v dollar sign line to root at 192.168.1.118 forward slash root. Okay. Don't you need that forward slash in there? Okay. Don't forget the forward slash. Okay. Alright, you know what, I think, I think that's 
that's it. Because there's some, some other patches and stuff, so. This is X out of here for right now. And, um. Go back up into the root directory. And check it out. Okay. What I'm gonna do is. Make up a few folders here. Right? We'll call, um. We'll make. CDR tools. the rename command right so we say rename um it kind of works <coughs> actually i think it is a part well seds in it i think we can rename and see that it looks familiar with said remember s and j okay um we say rename for every um instance of that half squiggly bracket we'll say replace it with nothing okay we'll say all that didn't work. Um, you can also erase these delimiters. Okay. For instance, with said, you would say S and G. Okay. And then you know with said, you would say um, replace um, Sam or Sam with um, Bob. Okay. But these 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 forward slashes are um, escape character, not escape characters, but they're delimiters, okay? So it kind of keeps it in order. I would say uh, said, and then you need to uh, it's sort of like a bracket, all right? But you you know that's the, that's what you do. All right, we know about that, okay? Well, it's the same thing with rename. Rename kind of works the same way, okay? And you can also do this with said too. The the forward slashes don't have to be delimiters, okay? Um, you can set something up as else as a delimiter. I'm gonna use the at sign, okay? So I need two at signs as a delimiter. Or or you can use um you can use a dash, okay? I don't think you can, I don't know if you can use a plus, but okay. You can set these up as delimiters, alright, because um, I think the forward slashes, the forward slash sometimes, you'll see when you get into moving stuff around and forward slashing everything. It's a little messy up. Okay. So I'm going to replace that squiggly bracket with this. Now let me see if it happened. Alright, it didn't happen. <laughs> Alright, but I'm telling you, you can do that. <coughs> you can do that with said and with other stuff like that. Alright. Okay. S and G. Let's use the escape character with the squiggly bracket, okay, and replace it with nothing. Okay, let's see if that works. It's like, nope, it didn't work. I'm sorry. Move. <laughs> let's just move it. Move CDR tools. CDR tools to uh, CDR tools. Okay. Okay. And then we'll do 
the same for nmap. We'll move. Um, we'll move n nmap. We'll move nmap. Um, oh no, dot. It's on the other side. Nmap squiggly to uh, let's call it nmap. Okay. Okay. And um, let's move all of our CDR tools. Move. Uh, move. Ls. Grab CDR tools. Okay. I'll just say something like while read line. You could probably use a for loop in here, but I'm not too good with for loops. While read line. Do move. Dollar sign. I'm an idiot. Um, move CDR tools. That's 2.0.1 ASCII patch. We'll move that into CDR tools, and then we'll do something like uh, move. That. We already got the ASCII patch. We'll do uh, make ISOFS. We'll move it into CDR tools. And we'll do something like um, tar tar bz dot tar bz okay dot tar dot tar dot bz dot bz to the C D R tools okay I guess it's kind of cool why or kind of makes sense why you don't want to um move every, or, what do you call it, why you don't want to, uh, you want to separate your packages, I guess, as you download them, okay, so that's that, um, let's proceed and extract our net tools, so we're going to say tar, xvf, uh, net tools, net tools, first, it says we need two patches, and I'll show you where I'm at. Page 515. Okay. Actually, we need three patches. We need three patches. But first, I'm going to extract. Actually, no. First, I'm going to show you a little little thing. Hark. Man. I have my net tools. It's all over the place, right? Um... First, th these three patches here, it says that we need um, the GCC 34-3 patch. Okay, we got it, but it doesn't say patch, it says .gz. Hmm, why? You know. Um, I think I downloaded this off of um, LinuxFromScratch.org, and it really wasn't a patch package, I think. It just came out as a, as a GZ, right? Well, that's a problem because, you know, in our syntax, um, we have to, um, you know, it's, uh, in our syntax, it says that we have to throw in dot .patch. You know what I mean? Patch NP1, remember? Um, patch dash uh, NP dash 1 dash I, uh, yada yada patch, you know. Well, it doesn't say yada yada dot GZ, you know, that, that might be a problem. So, with some patches, some older patches anyway, um, they, they're not, you can, what you can do is when you're surfing, um, and, and you see, you see a patch, sometimes a patch may not be in a patch form, it just as like a, um, as a t text, you know what I'm saying, alright, so when you download it, it, um, you don't really get it as text, you get it as a GZ, or, or a zipped up format or something, okay. All you gotta do with that, all you gotta do with that is just take it and just extract it, okay, and rename it. So I got one patch. I got two patches. I got three patches that are all jacked up, right? Yeah. So I could say make directory v. I'm gonna call it patch. Which is okay. Now I'm gonna move all. All dot 
Luigi said to Patches. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to CD into Patches. So now I can work in here. Okay. Um. I can say, since it's GZ, alright, we got to use G. G unzip. Gunzip. Gunzip. Gunzip with the D switch, which is, um, we extract a package, but we actually delete. We extract a package, but we actually delete the, um, zipped up format, alright? So it's not like in, with the tar format. With the tar format, we had a, a BZ2, or a tar.bz, right? You know, um, say nmap.tar.bz. Well, we extract the tar.bz file, and then we actually have a directory, and we still have the old, uh, tarball, right? Well, with this, you don't have the tarball anymore. It gets rid of it. Okay? Or it just decompresses it. It just takes the suffix off. So you don't even have that. If you wanted to back that up, you don't have that anymore. Okay? So that's that's what this does. With the D switch. Okay? We're going to say, um, gunzip D all. All. Okay? So now you can see that the GZ disappeared, right? You know? Um now that's okay that's what we want um, we can also see something like uh, LS uh, while wow, read line um, do while well, read line do while well, read line Man. do um, move move uh, dollar sign line dollar sign line dot uh, patch okay there's like no patch extractor okay it's just named dot patch okay patch done all right so there we go we got all our patches okay cool now I can also say move all these back up we propose uh, all all back up okay I'm going to CD back up too. And remove the patches directory. So that's what we can do. Where did my patches go? Hmm. Alright, they're here. Alright. I can't see crap. Because I got crap everywhere, right? Bummer. Actually, I'm going to move what's in net tools. Put more crap up here. <laughs> net tools. All. Here. List. Oh, net tools. What's in net tools? Move all. Net tools. I got crap everywhere. CD into net tools. No, with a with a comma, right? Move net tools all comma here. CD net tools. Uh, there's nothing there anyway. CD net tools. And then let me remove net tools here. That's over. Okay. Um, so we got one, two, three, four net tools. Okay. Now we just proceed with um, tar xvf net tools dot tar b set. Okay. CD into net tools 160. Okay, and um, just like our other packages, or some of our more deeper packages, we had to create a directory, not create a directory, but we had to CD into that directory, and um, sometimes you might even actually create a build directory, alright, but with, with NetTools, we're not going to have to do that right here, okay, but you do want to be inside of NetTools, of course, <coughs> um, from inside, I'm going to say patch, dash np1, dash i, Net tools 160-gcc one pa or three four patch. Okay, that's done. Um, and I need to patch kernel headers, so I'm gonna say kernel headers. That's done. Okay. And there's one more. Net tools mi iapl. Okay. So that's all done. Now um, I'm on page 516. By the way. Okay. And yes.
this. I don't know what that means. From in here, we're going to say yes. Double quotes, pipe it, say make. that. And we need to say set I E. Quote quote. Let's say S have underscore IP underscore have IP tools space zero pipe have underscore IP underscore tools Base one pipe with a G. I think. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. Um, it's zero from one. It's set as zero. Okay. Um, for nothing. And then uh, the one is uh, the one is uh, that's in the config file. Config dot H. H. Okay, the zero represents off, and the one represents on, right? Okay, so I can just pull this back up one more time, and just cut out some stuff in here. Just say, um, have IP tools, okay, let's say, have underscore um, MII space one. Okay, so that's turning on MII, and we we say have underscore MII, okay? So, that's that. But the E is like an append, so you don't have to actually hit said five times like I'm going to end up doing, okay? So that's what you do. That's what the E is for. And the I is the input file, okay? So you, in order for it to go through, you need to specify I, because you're going to um, actually do work to the uh, config.h, not just view it, not just list it, but you actually want to do work to it. So that's what the I switch is for. All right, so it's it's just basically saying um, for the occurrence of have uh, MII, and it's going to have a zero in it, in the, the natural occurrence inside of the con inside of the config.h file. Okay, change that and replace the whole string with have mii uh, open or space one okay okay that's that okay then we need to say also said i which is input e because we're going to uh, do more than one set at a time okay said um, with a land of g we have to say said S pound, which is a whenever you have a pound in a script, it, it's um, the that line is a comment. Okay, so it's gonna basically right now we're saying uncomment have IP tools um, equals zero. Uncomment that to say have have underscore IP underscore tools have IP tools equals one. Okay, so <coughs> just basically turning it on, right? Let me check that real quick. Have IP tools equals zero. Have IP tools equals one. Okay. And because we threw the E behind it, we don't, um, only thing we had to do now is just attach, you know, it's, it says attached, so we don't have to type in set I again. Okay. So S and at G will say also um, uncomment have have underscore mii equals zero. Um, we'll uncomment that. We'll change that string with a comment in it, which is actually uncommenting mii equals one. Okay, I think so. Okay, in the config dot. Uh, make file, okay, and we'll say make, okay, okay, 
It's working. We got this. Mm. Look at that views on it. It, it. I don't think it's more than like three minutes. Not even. Nah, it's less than a minute. Point one. So it's about a minute. <coughs> Alright, now also too it says uh, this package does not come to twist test suite, so that's cool. Um, but we do want to say, as you as root user, I'm already root. I've been root, okay. But you can, I, I can become root to er, <laughs> which is just actually, it's uh, it's just taking a delimiter out. All right, so I guess it's expecting. Well, I don't know. I'm root. I'm root like this. Who am I? Let's see. Who am I? Who am I? I'm root here. And I bash out. And then I'm still root here. Okay. So, <coughs> with that, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just going to leave this as it says become root user. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Make update. Okay. That's done. That's done. Alright. Um, I should put on another user, but I like having the user, the, the root user functionality. But, um, I don't want to. Okay. I haven't had any problems yet. Alright, but, um, there's certain things, though, when you do make packages, you can extract it as a user, okay? So if you were an LFS, the user, okay? Um, you can extract it as a user and everything else like that. But when you go to install it, it's going to install as root uh, as user, okay? So you have to be that root that user to use it, all right? So that's why you say sudo. That's why you say sudo because it's for all the users, not just the LFS user, okay? But if you were a user and you extracted it as user, you would have to be that user to use it. And the processes for that that um, that system. That program, that program is not only going to call user root and all that. It's going to call other stuff, okay? Other groups, other groups that um, that need to have root permissions, okay? Not user permissions, but root permissions. Right, it's going to call other groups, you know, and you'll get screwed up. Um, so now let's see if we got if config. We do. Watch. Before we didn't. But now we do. Uh, let's see if we type in if if fg. That's the only thing we had before, right? That is, I don't know what this is, right? We had <laughs> we had no ARP and everything else, but now we do. Okay, so now we have if config, and it looks like that. Okay, we can down it, up it, whatever you want. All right. Um, do I have netstat? I got netstat now. Okay, I didn't have netstat before. I had like and end state all right whatever that is that's that's what we came out of the box with until we installed our net tools okay and we got ARP okay okay um I think there's some more stuff uh that we got our ARP let's see uh, DNS domain host name no we, do we have host name yeah 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 we got we got a host name so we can see our host name before we didn't have that um, route. We got our route command. Okay. Before we didn't have that, I think we had we had uh, we had route f, which is flush, and route low. All right. Do I, if I flush my routes, what'll happen right now? What'll happen? I don't know. I'm not gonna do it. But you can mess with them on your own time. And that's that. Okay. That's that. Looking good. Got um. Now let's get some nmap. Okay. Um. I want to naturally go back up to my root directory where I have all my sources. Okay. And I'm gonna delete, remove, inclusive, net tools. Um. Net tools. Can I say all? Yeah, I did. I got it. Okay. I'm going to remove nmap, the directory, the failed directory. Okay. <coughs> now, nmap is on uh, on the PDF anyway. It's page 539. Okay. And 
539. Um, point it takes five minutes to build it. Optional, no no um, definite dependencies and no patches. Okay, it's so cool. So we'll just untar XVF and map tar BZ2. Um, CD into nmap. CD into nmap. 403. Okay. And from inside of here, we'll say configure. Configure prefix equals user. And make. And make. Yeah. Not make, make install, okay? Because you're. You, um, you gotta become root. Alright, so if you're if you're as an LFS user, you're not a pseudo root. They say you should not run around as a pseudo all the time. And I agree with them. Alright, you should not run around as pseudo all the time because if you go into um, say your your Etsy folder, alright. No, better yet, go into your proc folder, okay, and change all those permissions to root and your computer will not run. Okay? Those groups are not meant to be some of them are not meant to be root. Okay, they actually have groups like uh, I don't know. I don't, it's not. I don't know if there is a group called CPU, but they're not all supposed to be root. All right, so I did that one time. I went to the to root district. <laughs> I went to the root directory of my file structure, all the way to the top. Okay, and I changed everything to root by accident, and I had to reinstall my operating system because there are certain programs that are searching for um, other groups and other permissions that. They um they all they all should not be root, right? And if you got you, you know you like your dev folder or whatever like that, I mean you know you got f 60 different users. You, you can't bring that back, or you can bring it back, but it's easier for you just to redo your whole operating system. Okay, so that's that's I can justify and say that it's not good to be root all the time. Okay. Um, but for this, I am, because I don't really intend, because I learned the hard way and I had to reinstall my operating system, I don't intend to, um, just run into the root directory and change everything, okay? So, but, um, we could say make n, with a double ampersand, make install, we could say that. But if you're not a root user, if you actually are a user, if you're LFS, say say if you're LFS or if you're Joe, when you say make and make install, like I said, it's only going to be for that user and not for the root user, okay? Or not, or not for sudo on the um, machine. So if you if you have a user named Joe and then you have another user you you created, your friend is saying Bob. Bob's not going to have any permissions to end map, okay? And worst case scenario. Bob, if we did that with NetTools, Bob wouldn't have any permissions in NetTools. Bob would never be able to use ifconfig. All right, so when you're at work and you call Bob and say, Bob, go fix, uh, you know, go to my computer and um, um, even SSH. If you say, Bob, go to my computer and um, start my SSH server so I can, you know, use it from work, Bob's going to say, what the hell is going on, Sam? You you really screwed me on this one. Okay. So, and, it, and it's your fault. <laughs> So that's that. And did anybody see the alligator fly by? Let's look at it. Man, you get a lot of output. But yeah, there it is. That's not an alligator. That's alligators don't breathe fire. That's Godzilla. Look at him. He's in of death. Godzilla. Okay, I'm done. Okay, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. So, now as root, so you would say sudo, su, or sudo, or, actually, I don't even think you have sudo. You don't have sudo. Sudo's not here, right? You don't even have, like, you got su, but uh, you would have to say something like su LFS, right? If that's your user. Well, I don't have a user LFS, so, but if you, yeah, su, su Sam. Su Sam, okay. You'd be pseudo Sam, okay. But I just hit bash, and I'm I'm already um, bash bash. So 
make install now. That should finish that up. End map should be done. Okay. Um, there's no other error one ignored. Why? What is it? What is it? We know what that is. Over here we say end map. installed so that's that's all okay I'm, I'm just thinking I got to reboot my machine or something okay because um, we did install IF config and everything else so it kind of you know threw a kink into the chain with that all right so but I'm not going to I'm not going to reboot um, we can do this without rebooting okay now it's on to links 2.1 Okay, um, links 2.1 on a PDF is 501. Okay, so I'm going to type in 501 on the BLFS PDF. Um, I need the git links actually. I need to check and see what the dependencies are. Optional. Okay, um, is there any patches I got to get? I don't see any patches. see any patches. Okay, so we just gotta go get it. And I'm just gonna go sh no. No, I can I can pull up this little web server. Links 192 168.1.10 who uh, 101 okay and I'll just find links in here instead of actually SSH and into it. Um, by the way, too, you can hit the, the forward slash key, okay, it brings up like a little search thing, okay, and then I'll just type in the bottom links, links, okay, we see pre-12 tar bz, pre-12 original, hmm. what's the difference, I don't know, let's get a pre-21, pre pre-23, let's just get that. Okay, enter, we clicked on it, and now we want to hit uh, Shift D for uh, download, and it did that, okay, uh, enter file name, leave XML, I don't know what, no, I don't, why did it come up with XML? CD into root. Okay. We'll remove nmap. nmap-403. Uh, can we say all? We can say all. Okay. Um, let's say links again from here. Online. We could use bash history. I'm not using bash history on this. I just up keys. Okay. Um, I think one of them might be a little funky. HTML <laughs> application bzip2 save to disk um, yeah there it is that's what it looks like okay okay so you know what sometimes the bottom the bottom uh, ticker bar can be great all right and it can help you out because in that instance it did help me out because I, I was downloading the wrong thing whoa man what the hell is this okay Let's move this links blah 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 
to links something better we can understand tar visa 2 dot tar 323 okay okay I will say on tar links tar visa 2 okay all right <coughs> this is a little guy I don't think it takes it doesn't take that long does not come in a package test suite blah 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 DNS 644 keys braille how to uh, I don't remember setting up links this way. I remember setting it up according to um, the links with a Y that way. Okay, and, and you know, it definitely is probably wrong. All right, but the books tell me to do it like this. Before I read off the um, the HTML site, and believe it or not, the HTML and the book are kind of not different, but um, they they do something else configure prefix equals user make c flags c flags c flags equals um dash o o for oxygen is that o for oxygen no it's zero yeah well, and now it should be make make o I think it might, it might, this might be wrong, it might not be zero two. it might be o, o as an oxygen, how to, it's capital, let's wing it, right, we'll wing it and say capital O as an oxygen, because zero two, I don't remember that being a, probably a make flag, I'm, probably gonna regret it but I remember that being like a make flag. Sign and compare let me say dash W N O pointer sign. Uh, is that right? Make C flags, make C flags dash O as an oxygen. I don't I don't know if that's right either. If we make it, we'll get an error if that's wrong. Okay. So, found, found works, yes. Traditional, no. Uh, I don't see any, like, critical errors yet. So, I think we're okay. Right, as, as for instance, though, with the BLFS book, when you go and you see um, links to point whatever, okay, um, and on the BLFS, on HTML, you click links. The links with an I pre or tw yeah, pre 23 two point whatever the, the packets we just got. Um, what happens is you end up um, you you redirect you redirect to links with a Y. All right, so you can't even set up links the way that you 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 think you should according to the book. Okay. Because that config file is a lot different. You see Zlib support now with end curses and everything else like that. And that's how I installed the links on the other side. With my other machine, I installed it just as it had in the uh, in the book or on off the site. So, is it quote configured wrong? Yeah, it's configured wrong. All right, but it works. It works fine. So I don't get any issues with it. But um, the book and HTML they do differ. All right. So, and I'm out the book, off the PDF. I was reading off the HTML, um, but I actually downloaded the HTML, and it's it kind of backwards. Dangerous. Better to use make us temp. Warning. Get temp name. I don't know. Okay. I don't think that's an error. We'll say now make install. But remember, it says as root user. Okay. So become root. Make install. Even directory, blah blah blah. Root entering, leaving. Okay, no errors then. Okay. You'll get the hang of the convention though. I mean like um when you configure the package you can be anybody you want. But when you make the package, you should be root to make it. Okay? Or if you're already root for everything then 
you'll be uh, links 2.1 pre 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 23 you, you should become root okay and when when you go and install uh, the, the majority of your packages it'll become sooner or later like a second nature to you that okay I extracted the package as uh, as Sam or the user Sam I extracted the package as Sam I configured the package as Sam but if I want everybody to use it I'm gonna have to become pseudo Sam okay you have to eat your Wheaties braille how to okay and if anybody's blind watching this it's great that Lynx has a braille helper because I don't know <laughs> maybe you're not blind <laughs> hope you're not blind that would really suck links dash two point one but if you if you if you are blind though and you did get this far <laughs> we gotta hang out because you're somebody that I can definitely pull inspiration from okay okay that's links and let's go global global baby say links welcome to links we got a web browser okay we have the one I want anyway we got 168.1.1 oh one yeah this is my web browser I love this web browser links is awesome okay display cancel and cancel packages I love my web browser. Alright, so you know how Lynx works. On to the next one. Lynx, now we're going to say CDR Tools. Um, CDR Tools is at 11.49. So in the BLFS PDF, 11.49. Uh, CDR Tools. <coughs> the good thing about CDR Tools, let's see, required patches, ASCIIs, we got all those ASCII patches. And nine ISO. We didn't. I don't know if we have all those patches. CD into root where we have all our stuff stored. Okay, we can remove. Um, if, if you want to save up these old tar balls, save them. Okay, that's what I did. Man, there's a lot of crap in there, ain't it? Um, save up your old tar balls. Yeah, we're cool. Save up your old tar balls and keep them to the side in case your system crashes or you can use them for later on. You know what I mean? So you don't have to go back and keep downloading everything. Um, this says that on page 1149 we have required make ISO patch and a ASCII 2 patch, right? And we got an ASCII 2, we got the, the file, we got it. Okay. Now, like I said before, these are uh, both in GZs, right? Well, these are actually supposed to be dot patch. Well, there is kind of really no dot patch. Okay, dot is just added. It's not a type of format. Um, the dot patch is not a really a type of format. Okay. So, let's um, extract first. We have to extract the file in the GZip or GunZip. We have to extract them because they are GZed. All right. But um, when we extract them, we're going to say gunzip all um, gzs, alright? There's only three files in here, two are gzs and one's a bz2, alright, so it won't mess with that. Okay. And then we just say move cdr tools, cdr tools, um, that's ASCII dot two to cdr tool. And I could move it out, but I'm, I am going to move it out. Move CDR tools 2.1.tar back up. Okay. Okay. And we'll just do ls while read line do move. Um, we'll say dollar sign line to dollar sign line dot patch. If we didn't move it, we would have 
have uh, we would have problems. All right. So uh, and we can also move all these too. Let's just move these all up. All right. Alright, basically we had all these in one folder, right? But instead of saying move uh, CDR tools uh, 2. Point, uh, you know, the ASCII patch, instead of moving the ASCII to the, and then we had to type out the CDR tools ASCII.2 dot two patch, you know, move it from move it from ASCII to the whole thing, you know what I mean? And the same thing with make ISO FS, okay? Because we extracted it, had no dot patch suffix to it. Alright, so we'd have to say move the dot one to the dot one dot patch. Instead of doing that, we just moved out the oddball, okay? And then just named everything in the folder a dot patch folder. Okay, and then we just moved everything back up to where we are now. Yeah. Get back here. Okay. So that works. Now we're gonna say tar XVF CDR tools. Dot tar dot bz2. Okay. And cd into our cdr tools 2.1. Okay. And from inside of here, we're gonna call the patch back. That's back out. Patch i. Cdr tools 2.1. Um, make iso fs1 patch. Okay. And we also got a patch. ASCII, ASCII two patch, cool. Okay, cool. Make ins underscore base. No, not bash. Base. Make ins underscore base equals user define defin user. I got a bad feeling. Root. I got a bad feel. <laughs> got a bad feel. I got a bad feeling I screwed something up somewhere. Define S group with a GRP equals root. Let me stop. Check it out. Making space. Making space. Um, equals user. Defins. Defins. user equals root. Okay, I think that means pseudo root or something. Define s group equals root. Okay. No such file directory. No such file directory. I got a lot of crazy stuff. What does that mean? I think we're okay. Well, if we're not okay, we sure as heck will know. Alright. Um, this. this is not long. Five SPUs. Something like that. Okay. Um, so now, okay, like I said, if you were a user, you would be extracting it right now as a user. As Tom, or Bob, or any other kind of name you have. Alright. And after um, we configure this, as a user, we can configure as I don't know what that knows the file directory is. Arch directory. After configuring it as a um, user, we can um, then make it as the pseudo user. All right. And CDR tools is cool because you have um, you got stuff. Uh, maybe your CD burner works. Well, mine probably does too if I can figure the heck out of it. But, um, I don't need to. You know what I mean? I don't have, it's not like I, I want to listen to music on this right yet anyway. Okay? Or if I want to watch movies on it, I can't. You know what I mean? I don't have a, I don't have a display manager. So, um, there's really you know, no point for me to get that going. Um, now, I can make ISOs. And, I could, you know, I could fix my CD player so, or CD ROM so I could um, burn an ISO to a disk. Well, I have nothing really to burn to a disk. I can make an ISO and I just uh, copied the ISO 
SSH over into my other machine, all right, if I need to. So it doesn't really help me to actually, you know, make a disk, uh, make my CD-ROM work. But that's what um, that's what this program does, all right. You also see too, it's got the CD record, all right. So you can actually you can burn you can burn ISOs with it. Um, you can uh, ISO dump. I think I don't know ISO dump. Maybe it reads files out of the ISO. I don't know. All right, but the one I really want and really care about is make ISO. All right, because you're you, not only is your ISO a compacted CD and whatever like that, but you can mount it from anywhere. Um, if you make a, a if you want a bootable program, a bootable um, CD-ROM, okay. Like if I if I burn this as a, uh, you gotta go sudo, get sudo sudo your name if you if you're not root okay but I'm root um ends underscore base equals user def ends user def ends user equals root so define I think that's define define s group or define pseudo group equals root install I think so looks good in space user yeah looks good warning messages like blah 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 are caused by GNU bug I don't know okay but um if you wanted to make a, a live CD of say even your CD or a, a CD that you pulled off, right? If you have another distro and you're using the heck out of your Linux from scratch and you want to make a, a, a ISO from that distro, you can copy right out of the CD drive, okay? And um, <clears throat> in order for you to actually make it bootable and stuff, you're going to need to have make ISO program. And that's what this does. Clear it up, let's say install verbose. M755 dash D for make directories as needed. User share doc CDR CDR tools 2.01 and 2.01 and install for both. I think it's set for make permissions. I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be permissions. Read me. Read me. Read me all. About. Okay. Say doc. Okay. Forward slash all. All. Dot ps. Okay. And then we say user. Um, share. Doc, CD, CD, R, tools, dash 2.0 point, no, no points. Okay. I think so. Let's go global and see if it works. CD, R, yep, CD, record. Okay. And I'm going to say make, make ISOFS. Okay. Um... Let's go root and get rid of we'll get rid of all this stuff. Remove all. Okay. CD record is done. We don't need this anymore. Go back out of there. Okay. Um. Basically, CD record. CD record. We can say I don't know if it's got a scan bus feature to it. Maybe it does. To record possible. Cause I'm a, okay. Well, it's not. I don't think it's recognized on my stuff because I don't have my um, CD ROM driver. Or I don't have my CD ROM working. So maybe that's why. That's what you would do, right? You would scan that and it would list out your C available CD devices. Okay. If you had like nine CD burners, you would see all nine CD burners right there. Um, let's do. 
a little run on root. Say if I had a directory. Make directory. Um, Jack. Jack smells. Okay. Let's. Maybe we should do something else. Move. Move Jack smells to Jack smells. Like pizza. Alright, so if your name's Jack, you don't really have the. You don't stink. You smell like pizza. I like pizza. Not all the time, though. So, say if you made that, Jack smells like pizza. Okay? Um, I need to, and you wanted to make this bootable, um, Jack, ls, let's see, <laughs> we'll move Jack smells like pizza, um, uh, to, um, dot, uh, Linux, uh, his OS or something, right? Jack smells like pizza, OS 3. Okay. Jesus Christ. Move Jack smells like pizza to Jack smells like pizza underscore OS3 or OS, okay? So if that was your operating system, right? Jack smells like pizza operating system. You can, um, you want to make an ISO image of make ISO FS of that folder. Or even if it was stocked with pictures, right? You want an ISO, but I, I don't know why you'd make ISO of pictures. But you would say, make ISO of S, okay? You can give it a volume name, and the volume name would be my, my, my OS, okay? You say the recursive folder, okay? Jack smells like pizza is the top folder. Um, but it's, there's other stuff below it, okay? So, R switch for recursive, okay? And you can put that into um, the name of your thing would be like um, new OS dot ISO, right? And that's how it would run. All right, I'll see you in a second better um, stuff because obviously there's nothing in it. All right, but that's how that's how it would go down. Okay, so we got make ISO FS on there. It's got some libs, some libraries, um, lib paranoia, lib uh, rc, lib sgc, all stuff like that. Alright, read more about CD-ROM. Uh, you got uh, CDDA to wave, which uh, converts compact disc audio into wave sounds. Okay, that's a program that came with um, our make our CD CDR tools. Alright, make IFO, ISOFS. Read CD, read CDs. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to 376. 376. 376 is CPIO. Okay? So, uh, you'll be using... I used the heck out of my um, Make ISOFS, so I really needed that. Okay? Um, CPIO. Let's say links back to my internal server 101 okay let's say packages packages and we'll go and we'll look for CPIO okay we only got security fixes but we have this CPIO says we need one patch and I got the patch but I don't got the program All right? if you enter enter again and go down to OK, you got the stuff. Okay? Look and find it. There it is. Okay? So I don't have CPIO um, Doug at 102.168.1.101. I, I don't, I only have, I have to patch up on that little quote um, server. Okay? So, I'm going to go in the back end and grab out um, the CPIO that I need. I only got the patch for the program. So, I'm SSH'd into my laptop again, and I'm going to say CD up to mount 1. I'm going to say I got it in backups out on the programs under OS, under LFS, 
nofs uh, 6.2, I think. Okay, I'm going to list here and say grep uh, cp cpio. Yeah. Okay. So I can here I can say s copy v um, cpio dot two six dot tor. Um, I'm going to s copy that to who to root at um, 192.168.1.118 and dump it in the root folder. Okay. Cool. Exit. Exit. Oh, don't exit. Don't go too far. Get back here, homie. Uh, where is my CPIO patch? CPIO. It was named CPIO, but it downloads as something else. Because I got my WeComs off. Arg and not. Not a problem. We'll just go and we can cheat. Let's cheat. Let's cheat. I'm going to say something like this. Got out of sync somewhere. I made this. Heck, nab it. I made that little. Uh, what do you call it? It's just a. What do you call it? I made up this little site just to kind of give you an idea on what to do, what it's gonna look like, so I could actually use links and everything else like that. But I really don't need the site, all right? So. .1 I really don't need that site and what I did was I crudely made like an index HTML okay and I just like I put everything like in the while loops and everything else like that so it could just like burp out stuff so you know and some some of them got out of sync okay so some of the links don't really um they're there but they point to other stuff okay and maybe I should have taken a little bit more time but it's really not important because you're not going to be coming to my server and trying to download programs do you know what I mean so and I really don't use it that much so it's really you know so the majority of them work it's just that the one I want to do right now doesn't work so s copy now um, CPIO uh, security fixes to root at uh, 192.168.1.118. Oh, I gotta tell it where. Root folder. Okay. Shooky dooky. That's done. Clear. List. Everything is here. And we're gonna tar. Gonna say CPIO dot tor extract it go into CPIO okay and um, I don't know, was that as a patch or was it as yeah it was a patch okay cool so we're inside mm, where is the patch okay we're inside our CPIO and we want to say set I and we're going to say s forward slash 
watch throwing G's everywhere, okay? Sometimes you need a G, sometimes you don't need a G. And this one doesn't say G. I have a habit of making G's everywhere. And I kind of remember valid arg. I kind of remember what the G does, but I'm not confident enough to tell you. And um, I've never had a problem dropping a G somewhere. But, you know, I don't want you to run into problems. So, um, you did what? No. Don't be petting strangers' dogs. What's wrong with you? Okay. People petting dogs. That's not my dog. That dog might be valid rabies. Something. So, like I said, watch dropping G's. Okay. Jeez, S, uh, we can say invalid arg, arg match underscore invalid, okay? Source, mt dot c, okay? Okay. And, we're gonna say patch, np1 dash i, cpio, security patch, okay? Done. And we can say configure, CP configure CP IO to say uh, configure CP IO dot uh, underscore MT okay prog okay equals MT MT and say prefix equals user Okay, new line. Prefix equals user. Bind. Binder. With 1D. Equals forward slash bin. Okay. Lib. E X C. Dir. Uh, Lib. E X C. Dir equals forward slash temp. Okay. And say with r mt equals user s bin r mt okay now let me just go and let me just say and also just how they got it in the book echo define have underscore set locale locale one into config dot h okay and we can say the end again. We're gonna echo pound define uh, have underscore l stat l stat l stat one into config dot h and can we say make now? We can say make. Mm, okay. I think we're doing okay. And if we're not, we'll figure it out. But, um, this is CPIO. Man, after this video is done, I really gotta figure out what dog they're petting. <laughs> I don't like dogs. <laughs> I like my dog, but I don't like anybody else's dog. Especially the ones that look like great white sharks. I don't like them. Not at all. As a parent, you kind of gotta, you know, check up and see what dog they were. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, that's later. This is now. So, um, CPIO. CPIO. Like I said before, it's copy in and out. Um. Let's make these docs. 
make doc PDF. Okay. And let's say make C doc PS. Okay. And PS PDF. Looks good. PS. Cool. Text. Text C to HTML dash O doc CPIO dot HTML okay doc doc CPIO dot text E okay and we say we can say make info actually no, no space make info make info that's just plain text dash o doc for the cpio dot txt txt doc c cp io dot text taxi alright let's say <clears throat> make info plain text dash o doc cpio dot text that looks good uh, the next line up looks okay okay make c doc dash ps cool pdf cool cool everything's cool enter uh, what happened, Debian? I don't see any errors. Error 1. Uh, that's only in a PDF, so I don't have to worry about that. Look. Who cares? I don't have a PDF viewer anyway. Clear. Said I. Um, S. What? S -E. My convention is to drop a G right at the end. You know what I mean? You know, watch out. It doesn't say it in the book, so I'm not going to type it. But if I type the G, I don't think I'd have a problem. I don't know if I'd have a problem. Static space const as constant char. Okay. With just const char. Const char. Okay. I'm going to say tests genfile.c and make check. Right? Right. No, that's a little test suite. And all test two said we're successful. Looking good. Alright. Now, if you're not root, be root. Okay. Your name goes right here. Okay. Get root so, um, you know, you can be global for everybody to use if you want more than one person to use your machine. I don't want more than one person using my machine. So, I'm not, you know, I don't really have users. I'll probably set up a user or something one day. Probably one day soon, too. But, I'm, I'm not really concerned about it. It's 755D. User. Share. I tell you, though, sometimes these docs can just get on your daggone nerves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because they're so long and they're so... They're, their pathways are so long and everything else like that and you're like alright I already just installed the program what the heck do I need the docs for well you should get the docs okay install 755 D user shared doc CPI user shared doc get the docs you know what I'm saying just just go ahead with it don't be all like I don't need the documentation on some stuff you're not going to need it but when you go to hit, um, if you forget a command, right, if you say CPIO, you know, uh, OV or something, and it gives you back some crazy error and said, you know, that's not real, alright, and then you go, you type in CPIO help or something, <laughs> you're not going to have any documentation, you're going to have to go online and find all your documentation, and that can just be a pain in the butt, because nobody knows all the commands, right, right. And all the switches. You would really it'd be a waste of
time to do that. To learn them all. We got doc for so CPIO dot and we're gonna make a dot PDF, right? Yep, dot PDF dot PS dot DVI dot uh, HTML dot uh, txt <coughs> I said dot but we got commas and you know how that is when you got these commas wrapped inside of uh, squiggly brackets we're just gonna make all those dots okay do you know what I mean man you built this thing user shared doc cpi dash 2.6 this is file directory documentation what I do I got a CPIO program <laughs> it doesn't matter let's say CPIO help can we say help yeah all right so I got a CPIO program hey you know what I just don't have any documentation arg but who cares really who cares about anything so check this out. This is the scope of CPIO. Um, first, let me remove that extracted folder. Okay. This is how CPIO goes down. Let's say if we made a directory. Um, Jim, actually, let's do let's do it better. Let's say install uh, for both D for create directories is needed. We'll make um, something like Jim, Tom, Dan, or Dan's place. Dan's got some wild parties, right? Okay. So say we made that. Uh, where the heck is it? Oh, it's up. Yeah, Jim's got some wild parties, right? Or Dan's got some wild parties. Jim's probably pissed off because Dan's like, you know kind of paying the rent and uh, Jim's getting all the, the <laughs> city citations, right? Alright, so if we CD into Jim, CD into Jim, Tom, and CD into here, okay, and we're going to echo something, we're going to make like a text file, we'll say echo, uh, let's say cops are coming, right? Who thought he says, like, cops are coming? You guys say, cops are coming. You know what I mean? Alright. I say the cops are coming. Um, um, to over, over the phone, right? Bang. Oh. No. I, I can't put that many. What the heck? Echo. Cops. Cops. Are. Coming. Alright. Without the echoes, because I got an error on the echoes. But, like, you know, cops are coming. Quietly, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's cut it out. Alright. It gets like a phone call and it says, Cops are coming. Or, cops are coming. You know. Maybe they're really, really shady and they're really used to having cops coming. And so they're just like, you know, cops are coming. It's not nothing exciting. You know what I mean? Maybe, the, like, the cops come all the time. I don't know. But whatever's going on, Dan's crazy in there. Okay. So let's move Jim to root. Okay. Just to get him out of the directory here, because we don't uh, we really don't want him out here. I mean if he's got cops, you know, if he's if he's got tenants that have cops and everything, I, you know, I really don't hey. I got a couple traffic tickets, man, but that's about it. Alright. So we can now move let's say move um CPIO um, security fixes and move CPIO uh, dash dash tar okay into Jim into into let me specify this path G root Jim um, Tom uh, Dan's place which is just off the freaking hook uh, there okay okay so our CPIO is gone all right and if we LSL and we cat out Jim, 
what Jim's got going on. Um, and we hit a star. Uh, we, okay, well, we got Dan's place. Uh, I guess that's all the way at the bottom. Or let's LSL and say home. I oh, know. Root. Jim. Um, you see Tom. Uh, poor Tom. Nobody talks about Tom, right? Uh, phew. Maybe, maybe Tom is, uh, Dan's friend, or Dan's son, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, they're all shady anyway, so you don't know, I don't care, but this is what's inside of Dan's place, okay, it's, uh, it's, well, I guess the cops are already there now, <laughs> like, see, CPI, security, security, they're already at his house, it's too late for Dan, man. Alright, but this stuff is here, okay? This stuff is located in this directory, is what I'm trying to say. Alright. So, with, with, uh, <laughs> with, let's go back, and we'll go back into root. Okay. And we can say, let's call the find command. We'll call find, um, under, under the, the root folder. We'll say find, um, what was a oh, phone phone dot txt right under root I, I ran into a problem with this before control c control c get me out of here get me out of here all right but um don't worry we got this I hope we got this. Yeah, we got this. All right. So we're gonna say find phone. Okay. Um, let's call it name though, so we don't go all crazy. I name too. Cause I don't even know if I named the phone. All right. We see we got the file um, phone. Okay. It's underneath of Dan's place and Tom and Jim and Root. Okay. Great. What we can do is. Um, uh, we can take that, we know that, we'll do it again, that's the direct path of it, right? We can see that, okay? Say if that was a file within a file within a file within a file, and it's not a whole bunch of hoodlums just rallying it up down there, okay? If it was all like that, we could then take that. Come back up into root first. Yeah, I'm still in root. Okay, we can then take that file structure, all right, and we can then say CPIO, and it takes switches OV, which is uh, output verbose. Okay, we take the output verbose, and we're going to put it into a file, anything you want to call it. My file. My file file dot uh, cpio okay and it wrote one block it basically copies it byte for byte okay and so now we'll go we'll go here and we'll say okay we got a my file dot cpio alright so Dan's house is just going crazy this weekend um you know Jim I don't know what's going on but hey Jim just leaves town man alright he's outie okay poor Tom is just I don't know he's, he's like I don't know what's going on He's, he's probably on some real hardcore migraine meds. Alright, so if you go into root now, you see that uh, we, we deleted all that structure. Okay, list it out. We can say uh, list ls las h. Okay, we see it's not here. Okay, but with cpio, if you made a cpio backup, okay, you can also say um, we'll call it cpio. With the D for I don't know. Uh, I say I D V M I D I D M V C. C is a switch, but a lot of people complain about C and say you get errors with C. So I don't use C, and I have gotten errors with C. So I don't use C. I D M V. Okay, and then you say my file dot cpio. Okay, now Jim is gone. He left town. Alright, so maybe we'll say a week later. Now, Jim is back. 
okay. Um, but he's underneath of the root folder. Jim is here. Okay? And you go into Jim and parole Tom's medicated and Dan's place and and then the cops are going to be called again. Because they're just too crazy. Okay? So that's what CPIO does. Let me do that again. Alright. CPIO takes the full path, okay? And in my case I specified I specified um uh you know what? Let me remove let me remove the phone call, right? Ain't nobody call here, right? Let's remove the phone. <laughs> you know, uh, let's get back up to um, that, okay? And at the root directory, okay? And CPIO takes the full path of whatever you told it to as far as find, the find command, okay? Remember, we said find, find, find. said find 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 underneath of root the i name phone.txt okay so it scans everything you're talking about okay um our folder our phone.txt was in dan's place in, in you know tom and john and all or jim and all that all right so but it finds the whole structure from 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 there on up, and CPIO um, grabbed it. Okay, and not only did it grab it, but it re recreated it. Okay, block for block. Okay, so if I go back up into root, and I'm gonna say, um, no, Jesus God, CD into root, we'll, and we'll say something like, remember. We already deleted the phone call, right? You know what I mean? Ain't nobody call you. So, hey, Dan's place is just off the hook, right? You know, ain't no cops being called. It's cool. If I then said, um, CPIO OV, um, I'm gonna say, uh, actually, no, I don't wanna create a file. Okay, I want to extract a file, which I want to extract my CPIO again. Okay, so I would say CPIO I uh, DV uh, D DMV DVM no DMV no C. Okay, um, my file dot CPIO. Okay, and if I now go into root, Jim, Tom, D Dan's place, the daggone cops are called again. Okay, so, you know, that's how CPIO works. It creates a backup, alright? Uh, and you can also move that backup, okay? Let's get rid of root, okay? We got rid of that, okay? Come up here. Okay, we're going to go into our mount directory, okay, um, let's go into, I don't really want to make anything, let me go into temp, okay, there's, there's nothing here, dash L-A-S-H, instat, but, eh, okay, so, you're there, and let's, let's, um, Let's go back up to root. We're gonna copy, copy v, um, root, cp, or the, uh, my my file dot cpio. Copy that into temp, right? Okay. So we go into temp. Okay. We go into temp, and you know we've been hanging out for a while, and we got our life together, and we're just having a great time, and you know, we say CPIO dash I D V D M V uh no C. 
okay? We're just having a great time, and um, everything is cool. We just got it going. And now, before you know it, come back home after we think we're doing good. And... What the heck? Rude. Well, maybe, maybe it's over here. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Alright, we go somewhere else. And... <laughs> no, you know what? Jim, uh, you know, Jim still rents to his little friend and everything else. And guess what? The daggone cops are called again. So, it's like, oh my god, you know? <laughs> Alright. So, whatever it is, I mean, Dan is just off the hook. Okay, now he was over here, he was in the root folder, alright, and now he's he's just at the temp folder, okay, and he's just creating more chaos, you know, so, I don't know what's going on, but, not a rowdy dude, but man, them dudes, everywhere they go, they just, I don't know, I have no idea, I can copy that again. We'll say we'll put it in. The, let's go sources. Um, you know what? Let's let's do something here. We'll say install. Install. For both D for create directories is needed. We're gonna say new sources. Um, I. Um, hate. Um, I hate silver. Okay, I don't like gold, but I hate, I, who cares? Okay, I don't really hate silver. I like silver, actually. We're going to create I hate silver, and we're going to, um, copy, let's copy the contents of the CP, the temp directory, which is, uh, CPIO, copy, um, my my file dot cpio to i hate silver right okay copy that and let's then go to new sources i hate silver okay and there's a cpio down here all right um and we can extract the cpio here and we can say um i d uh, v m or dmv okay and we can say uh, extract it right here, my file dot cpio. Well, the daggone cops are called again. I mean, these guys are everywhere. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what's going down. All right. Basically, a cpio makes an exact byte for byte copy, and you can transport it wherever you want to go. And Jim, Tom, Dan's place, the phone call, again, transport it wherever you want to go, alright, and it'll create a direct, directory structure and everything of what was, what the path is that you created before, okay, so that's CPIO, and, and it's a lot, it's a good for a lot more than just, uh, you know, having the cops called or something, <laughs> but uh, it's good for a lot more than that but you can delete the file or even just have it set on a backup say I want to make a CPIO make a CPIO every 30 days right make a CPIO every 30 days okay that's and depending on where you put it if you put it underneath of the root directory okay it's going to copy all these files. If you put it in a loop, it'll copy all these files every 30 days. Okay? And if I CD into root, no, CD into root, okay, if I can make a copy every 30 days, so day 30 comes around, okay, and my computer dumps, okay? Oh man, you know. I don't know what to do now. I lost that everything, man. Alright. I'm going to say IDMV. 
um, you can go then and say extract my file.cpio okay and after the computer dumps you find out that the cops were called and that's why somebody <laughs> somebody at the, somebody at Dan's place <laughs> dumped your computer <laughs> because the cops are called right a little paranoid right a little paranoid it's okay it's okay all right so say day 30 comes runs around okay and now you make another CPIO backup right but you everything's fine and nobody's um, nobody's different okay it's just day 30 again all right I think they, they might be paying these people off and that's why the cops are coming I have no idea all right but day 30 comes around and your script makes another backup okay this is what's gonna happen this is okay okay it says CPIO moving leading spaces or slashes from members all right it's gonna it recreated the directory structure again okay but it didn't recreate it what it did was it looked for timestamps and whatnot like that and it says here that a newer or same age version exists of Dan's place okay so that's cool that's cool all right um so basically if you have a program um and your stuff already exists all right if you didn't touch your operating system for like a whole week okay and you did a cpio or a backup every week it's not going to recreate as you can see here it did not recreate your root structure okay at all um let me go and cd into root Jim, Tom, Dan's place, okay, and I'm going to cat into a file and say, um, calm down, calm down, you know, you guys, echo in there, and I'm just going to say, uh, you guys, uh, take it easy, man, easy, man, because, I mean, you know, Life's too short to be all being wrong with the law. You know what I mean? Maybe I shouldn't yell at him, huh? Let me move that to calm down to just uh, calm, calm down, calm down, calm down, uh, please. You know what I mean? Because these dudes are crazy, man. I don't know what's going on, but I don't. I really don't want no problems. So I go back up and the CD into root, okay, and um, if I say CPIO again, I can say ID of uh, VM, no C, okay, um, extract my, my file.cpio, and what happened was, whatever was in the CPIO, whatever was in the CPIO, it got recreated, all right? And we can go to, uh, uh, let's go, where? Let's go into root, Jim, mm, root, uh, let's see, CD into root, Jim, uh, Tom, dance place, we go back in the dance place, and that's there, okay? Um, it recreated, it would have recreated everything, it would have recreated everything, okay, but what happened was I didn't make a CPIO backup of this, this request to calm down, you know, so, but it did not recreate the things that were already present, okay, so, that's how CPIO works, um, it's a backup but it's a directory backup, you know what I'm saying, you know, it's a directory backup, and if you uh, create one, wherever you move it to, you know, if, if you move it to, uh, for instance, as you've seen, I moved it to the temp folder, and I extracted it there, well, it created a root, it created uh, the, all the other structures, okay, so basically what I'm saying is, if you go, if you make a CPIO backup of this, okay make a CPIO backup of this when you 
this is what I want to do. I want to put that CPIO on a CD, okay? And I can take that CD wherever I go, okay? And either I can extract it right on that computer, and it'll have my same directory structure, programs, everything, okay? And that's how, I know that's how Tiny Core Linux works, okay? It just has a CPIO file, all right? But it's also, um, it's uh, tiny core say tiny core dot cpio right but then it's also uh, bz it up okay so they took it and they piped it through bz or uh, no gz yeah dot gz okay so it's actually tiny core dot gz but when you extract the gz you find out it's a tiny core dot cpio inside of it okay and I think they have that on some type of loop okay so basically what it does is once you put the CD in, um, everything boots, error, error thing, everything boots, okay? And when everything boots up, um, it extracts, uh, it extracts the, uh, CPIO, alright? And that CPIO just populates your RAM with the device structure that was saved during the initial CPIO. Hope I uh, helped you out with that. Um, that's it. I'm done. Four eighty eight four. Have a great day. Don't get the cops caught on you. Or do. Bloopers. 4870.